Good afternoon, everyone. This is the third in the series of low carbon interiors workshops or webinars. Uh, and we're, today we're going to be talking about what does a net zero carbon workspace look like? So let me share the presentation with you. This is the third in the series. Um, to date, we've covered a couple of different topics around carbon emissions in buildings. And today we're, it's very different. It's a dis discussion around what net zero carbon workspaces could look like. From our perspective, I'll put some thoughts down. Uh, and of course, it's a, I'll open it up to a wider discussion with the group, which uh, won't be recorded for privacy reasons. So let's dive right in. Modern workspace requirements, it's easy to think the world is all about carbon reduction, but actually there's a whole lot of other requirements that take place uh, when thinking about the design of a new interior space. And those are, we hear a lot from clients about attracting staff back to the office. That's really important right now. Agile working, wellness, all of these topics are interrelated, hence all the uh, uh, overlapping circles here. And there's a whole lot of themes within those. There's also one overarching topic that uh, is over all of this, which is value for money or the need to do things on a tight budget um, in, in today's economic climate. So how does one unpack that? Well, there's a bunch of features or thoughts that go into each one of these overlapping areas. I won't dwell on too many of those rather than just pick up a few common themes. So let's think about these themes that address some of those different requirements. So style rather than fashion, that meets um, the carbon reduction requirement. Um, it hopefully also creates beautiful offices that attract staff back to the office without relying on fashion. Uh, longevity is second topic uh, and carbon reduction will benefit greatly um, through having furniture that lasts longer and offices that are designed for a longer uh, between refurbishments um, and also wellness because this due to time uh, off gassing occurs over time um, of volatile organic compounds for instance which means that over time um, furniture that may have been made with those VOCs um, has now fewer of them. Circularity is another great topic uh, because that reduces carbon. It means that ergonomic items are more affordable. It attracts staff back to the office because uh, we're hearing a lot of clients asking us for circularity because their staff are asking for a low carbon workspace. Natural materials, another big theme um, around carbon reduction. Biophilia is a great aspect of wellness that natural materials fulfill, uh, along with creating a beautiful office, uh, attracting staff back. Um, and finally, a, a point we put down here is flexibility uh, that aids in carbon reduction because you're not having to completely rework things, throw things away, uh, but also it attracts uh, staff back to the office and enables agile working. So this is just a cut of a few different topics that seem to be recurring these days that fall within this um, matrix of requirements. The question then is how does that translate into an aesthetic or does it at all, right? So what we've had to think is, so for instance, the, the starting point often in design is, well, what is the color palette? Now, obviously many organizations have their own brands, uh, but we're left with a, a blank sheet of paper. If someone said to us, what might a net zero carbon space look like? What we've tried to do is pull together some thinking around each of these themes, um, starting with a really basic first question, which is what colors do and don't go out of fashion and might enhance biophilia? And a starting point here is really simple, nature. So here, for example, is a image of uh, Richmond Park, which shows lots of colors. You've got grays, you've got browns, you've got greens. Um, in the background, a sort of frosty green um, and, and a bit of sky there as well. So all of these colors are never going to go out of fashion because they are always around us. And no one's ever said, oh, the English countryside is particularly ugly because it's no longer fashionable. Um, beautiful countrysides don't go in and out of fashion. And that's our sort of starting point. Um, and there, of course, there's a biophilic reason for that. I mean, all of us love spaces um, uh, that enhance our relationship with nature, but also bring nature into, into our spaces. So how might this translate, if we take go to the next step, how might this translate to a uh, mood board, for example? So I put that to uh, one of the talented designers that I work with and said to them, okay, create us a mood board that builds on this idea of a natural palette, um, but includes all of these other factors around circularity, around wellness. And here's what they came up with, which I think is really cool. Uh, you've got in here a lot of stylish items of furniture that aren't going to go out of fashion. So uh, on the top left there are Vitra ad hoc 
uh, desk stroke table, a um, little Muto coffee table. Um, you could argue that's fashionable, but many people think of it as very stylish. You've got a Davison Highly Fifth Avenue sofa in the top middle there, which is based on and a modern revisit of the old Chesterfield style. Uh, and on the top right there, um, the Eames designed aluminium group chair. I think it's an EA 108. Um, very stylish uh, and enables enables you to have an office that really doesn't go out of fashion when or at least um, a meeting suite uh, when teamed with the Vitra ad hoc table. Now the interesting thing is um, if you go to the offices of Shepard Robson, um, one of the world's leading architects or at least the UK's leading architects, um, I visited their Manchester office a couple of years ago. It was full of Vitra furniture um, that is decades old in design. And of course, the Eames chair is more than that. It's probably getting close to about 100 years old now, those designs. Um, but their office is full of that on the basis that they want a stylish office that's not going to out of fashion um, that will enable them to keep using that furniture for decades into the future. Very good economic decision, um, creates a beautiful space um, and drives style. We've also got there some recycled materials. You've got wood grain finishes for the biophilia. You've got 100% recycled fabrics um, and, and you're bringing timber into the space as well um, with those uh, wooden legs on those chair, on those tables, for example. So that's an example of uh, what could be interpreted as a low carbon uh, look and feel or aesthetic. But of course, this is really subjective and they're going to have people who are um, designing based on what staff want designing based on color palettes and the great thing about design of course is it can be reinterpreted over and over and in infinite different versions so this is just one thought um, of course the question is should there be a design style would that help with the development of a net zero carbon um, trend or, or, or uh, following because there is actually a look and feel that can be designed as net zero carbon that's another interesting topic for discussion in the group so uh, let's get into the discussion um, and I'm going to uh, cut away from this uh, when we get into this discussion. So uh, a couple of questions for discussion. What features of a new office aesthetic are you seeing? Uh, second question would be, what is your favorite example of a workspace that meets today's needs and is therefore um, meeting some of the low carbon requirements, but also those agile working, attracting staff back to office uh, and wellness as well. So I'm gonna pause the video now uh, we'll have the discussion and we'll come back and I'll finish off the presentation. OK, picking up again following that break uh, and discussion. I uh, just wanted to finish off by saying um, thank you very much for joining. Uh, you can register for further webinars uh, at the ripeoffice.com forward slash academy. Uh, we will be starting in the new year in January with the fourth topic of what does a net zero carbon campus look like? Now that's very interesting. That's not so much about aesthetic, but more when you've got a whole system operating where waste becomes the raw material. So one building shuts down um, that all of the materials from that are reused on site, processed hopefully locally uh, by those who are, social, who are uh, workplace disadvantaged, um, those who are finding it difficult to find jobs to, to create that uh, social sustainability benefits as well. Um, and then after that, a whole bunch of topics that will follow through uh, hopefully once a month for the, for the year next year. Uh, welcome some suggestions of additional topics uh, and we'll get we haven't set any dates for these just yet so keep an eye on your social media um, and the, the ripe office newsletter where we'll be publishing exact dates for all of these uh, inviting you to join on, us on eventbrite um, for another short session webinar um, to keep going so uh, all, all further information and historical webinars also at the ripeoffice.com academy in video form really encourage you if, the, if these are touching on topics that are of interest to you, your colleagues uh, or your clients or your suppliers, please, please feel free to share the links uh, with them. This is a learning resource that we hope you'll use. Okay, bye for now.